This video is part two of a discussion of classification and regression trees added to StatGraphics 18. Part one dealt with classification trees. This video deals with regression trees. Fitting classification and regression trees is a machine learning process for predicting observations based on data. There are two types of models that can be constructed. The classification models that divide observations into groups and regression models that predict the value of a quantitative variable y. Part one of this video covered the basics of building classification and regression trees. This part deals only with the things that are unique about building regression trees compared to classification trees. The first difference from the classification models is that what you're trying to predict is continuous rather than categorical. As an example, we're going to look at a data set from StatLib at Carnegie Mellon University. It has 396 rows, four with missing data, describing the miles per gallon and other features of 396 automobiles. We're going to fit a decision tree to predict the value of miles per gallon. As you can see, each of the terminating leaves in this tree is labeled with a value. That's the predicted miles per gallon of all automobiles that end up at that particular leaf. It's estimated by averaging the miles per gallon of all the observations in the training set that end up at that leaf. Another major difference between classification trees and regression trees is how deviance is defined. As with classification trees, let's let n be the total number of observations in the training set and k be the number of terminating leaves. Let's also let n sub i be the number of observations that make it to node i. And let's let y sub i j be the value of the jth observation at node i. The deviance at node i is then defined as the sum of squared deviations from each observation that makes it to that node and the predicted value. And you can see that the predicted value at a particular node is the average of all the observations that make it to that node. The output we'll want to look at is a little different too. Rather than looking at a classification table, we'll probably want to look at predictions and residuals. Also, rather than looking at the scatter plots, it's interesting to plot the observed versus predicted values and the residuals versus predicted values. Now let's see it in action. I've loaded into the StatGraphics 18 data sheet the data that I want to look at. To run the procedure, I'll go to our interface and select classification and regression trees. The dependent variable will be miles per gallon. I'm going to enter cylinders as a categorical factor because it's not really continuous. The other variables, displacement, horsepower, weight, acceleration, and model year, I'll put in as quantitative factors. The only change I'm going to make on the Analysis Options dialog box is to set the type of tree to regression and change the minimum within node deviance to 0 0.02. On the list of tables and graphs, I'll ask for the Analysis Summary, the R tree diagram, predictions and residuals. For graphs, I'll ask for the tree diagram again, and both plots versus predicted values. StatGraphics will now send the data to R, 
and wait for it to return the results. The decision tree shows that four variables are involved in predicting miles per gallon. The first split is based on the displacement of the engine. Smaller engine cars are divided from cars with engines having higher displacement. In the case of those with smaller displacement, there's an additional split based upon the weight of the vehicle. For lighter cars, there's a split then on model year. For heavier cars, also a split on model year. You notice the split's a little bit different for the light cars versus the heavy cars. There's a change between 78, 77 and 78 for the lighter cars, between 78 and 79 for the heavier cars. In each case, though, the newer cars got about 6 or 7 miles per gallon more than the older cars. In the case of cars with large displacement engines, the only further split was based on horsepower. As with all regression models, it's interesting to plot the individual observations. Here's a plot of the observed miles per gallon versus the predicted miles per gallon. One thing you'll notice is that the points line up in vertical groups. Each of these groups corresponds to the points at a particular leaf. The residuals are also quite interesting. Here's a plot of the residuals versus the predicted values. Again, you notice the points lining up by leaf. You also notice some potential outliers. As in all stack graphics plots, I can identify those points by selecting the identify dialog box, picking a variable such as car name, and then telling it I'd like to click on particular points to label. This point here is the Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra Diesel doing almost 20 miles per gallon better than predicted by the model. Down here we see the Mazda RX-3 doing almost 10 miles per gallon worse than predicted. If you'd like to have a slightly more complicated tree, you can go back, push the right mouse button, and go to Analysis Options. Loosening up things like the minimum within no deviance to split will let it fit a somewhat more complicated tree. You'll notice as you do this that the R squared statistic has risen a little bit although it hasn't had much effect on the outliers. As always, you can go to the Analysis Toolbar, press the Save Results button, and save the predicted values and residuals to Datasheet B for further analysis.